What's going on everybody? Matt here again from East Coast Sabres and today I'm coming at you with a review of the highly anticipated and finally released Graflex replica from the graflexshop.com. Now I'm going to do this as quickly as possible. Uh, it, it is going to be an in-depth review. It's going to be a little long but I'm going to get through it as quickly as possible. We're going to go over uh, the positives, the few negatives that it has. I'm going to show you how to assemble it. Just go over a general overview of the entire hilt. We're going to compare it to a vintage, we're going to compare it to a 2.0, and we're also going to compare it to a Roman props replica as well. Um, just to give you a good overview of everything about it, I want everyone to know exactly what it is that this replica is and what it is that they're buying when they look at it online because a lot of people are confused about which one to buy and we've been telling people to hold off until the TGS comes out and it is finally shipping so after this hopefully you have a good idea of which one you should buy so let's jump right into it the first thing is when you get it it's going to come in a box uh, like this uh, unless you order a couple of them um, <clears throat> excuse me it's got the uh, Graflex tape now obviously this one has been opened and you're just going to open the box and it comes wrapped in a nice bubble wrap and we can take it out uh, mine came with this uh, the bunny ears are separate this whole hilt has to be assembled by the way um, and we're going to go over that <clears throat> excuse me but the bunny ears are separate um, you got the nice Graflex, shark, uh, Graflex shop card with the Graflex bank on there, graflexbank.com, which is a great source of information uh, for anything and everything Graflex. Um, if you are on my Graflex, Graflex Addict support group on Facebook, there is a link to this as well, um, as well as any other form of Graflex information you can think of in the pinned post. But there's the graflexshop.com. And we'll get this box out of here. And now we have the hilt itself. Now this does come wrapped in a nice thick bubble wrap. Now this does come um, with another plastic uh, bag over it. I seem to have misplaced that since yesterday when this came in. I must have thrown it away without thinking. Um, but it does come wrapped in another bag, <clears throat> excuse me, for protection. So we will just move this aside that aside for now and here we have like I said the highly anticipated long-awaited replica from Graflex shop and this is exactly how it comes I have put it back exactly the way it was um, I have gone through this whole thing already and I've been in contact with uh, the Graflex shop themselves about my opinion of, of everything and uh, any any tiny little uh, discrepancy or anything like that that I found they're going to do everything that they can to kind of correct it in the future uh, for future runs or anything like that but rest assured that anything that you see is very very minute and I don't have really a single uh, big issue with this replica it is it is very sound it is very sturdy um, if we do a close-up here it is kind of fingerprinted but if we can do a little bit of the zoom in here the finish on it is very, very nice. It is that nice satin. It's very smooth, very even, I might add. It is very, uh, it is nice and even uh, between the upper and lower because they are two pieces, obviously. So the finish on them from upper to lower is very even, very concentric, and it looks very nice. It's that nice brushed satin. Uh, it's a little uh, duller than my personal vintage. Of course, you know, vintages, depending on uh, how they've been stored, how they've been maintained through the years, the finish on them will vary. I have one that is very, very shiny. I have one that, that I'm uh, building a saber out of, and it is it is duller. And this is a little bit duller still, uh, which I like. I, I very much like the uh, more satin finish. But if you want it a little shinier, just a little uh, metal polish, you know, light, light rubbing with the grain uh, will make it a little shinier. If you like that, I like it just as it is personally, uh, but everybody has their own opinion. <clears throat> if we open it up, just open the clamp, 
and twist the bottom. You can see here that they do include the clamp screw with the brace on the inside to keep the top half uh, from turning, but the bottom half does turn. It's a nice turn. It's not binding in any way. As you can see, the top half is empty. With this replica, unlike the Roman props, there is no blade holder. This is, does not come as a functioning flash handle. This is simply made to be uh, a lightsaber. If you have uh, functioning internals, I'm sure it could be made to fit. Uh, the Romans will not because, as we all know, the blade holder for the Romans uh, is not the same as a, as a vintage, so the pinholes will not line up the same. I actually have the internal uh, bulb socket for a uh, Roman's flash gun here, and if we install this so that the center lines up, as you can see, maybe you can't see the lighting. I got different lighting and it still doesn't seem to be helping. Let me just get my little pin light. As you can see, uh, if we line up the center hole here in the bottom, the pin holes, the uh, sink pin recessed holes don't line up properly. They're too low. We know that's a common issue with uh, the Roman props. But if you have a vintage uh, bulb contact holder, uh, it shouldn't be a problem in this replica. Uh, but that's really besides the point because this was really made to be uh, just a lightsaber. It's made for conversion so you don't have to gut it and you don't have kind of wasted parts on the internals. So if we set that aside for a second, the lower half is where they shipped all of my other things. Um, I have a second set of bunny ears here. Uh, this set does not have the, we'll just open this up real quick. Oh, I haven't opened this at all yet. This set of bunny ears does not have the uh, raised sections in the middle. And I really like that idea because it allows for anyone using a one inch blade holder, you no longer have to sand the nubs down on the bunny ears. Go something like that. It's a little bent, which we know is very common with vintage bunny ears is they do they do bend. And it's not, not a big deal, they just bend them back. And of course there is the uh, band that will go around. But as you can see there's no I call them nubs on the inside, whereas if you look at the ones that come with it, as you can see it has these raised nubs on the inside. And that works very well for 7 8 inch blades. Uh, it holds the blade nice and snug, but on 1 inch blades where it's bigger, um, if you don't sand those down, then when you put the blade in, it pinches the bunny ears open. Uh, or it opens the clamp, I should say, and pushes the bunny ears together awkwardly, and it doesn't look right. Um, so the fact that they do make them without the nubs is a huge plus in my book, uh, and I have suggested that rather than including them in every uh, Graflex that they make it an option when you purchase the hilt uh, to choose which one, uh, which blade style you choose, uh, excuse me, that you plan on using, whether it be 7 8 inch or 1 inch, uh, just to save on costs a little bit, that way they're not just giving out two sets of bunny ears. Whether or not they go through with it, I'm not really sure, but the fact that they do offer a set for 1 inch, uh, I really, really like that. So, the next thing we have is a replica button. I had ordered a bunch of other stuff. I had ordered a bunch of buttons and stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, to go with it. Uh, here we have a glass eye, clear glass eye retention. Uh, this red button is uh, just a retention screw, by the way, non-functioning. So your replica may not come with all this stuff. I had ordered a bunch of other stuff. Um, here's a darkened glass eye retention screw. Here's the replica red button, you can see replica functioning and just a few more things in here 
here is the little baggie that comes with all the stuff necessary to assemble the kit it has the beer tab it has the slide switch assembly it's got the emitter screw it's got the brass contacts we'll go over all of that uh, later on in the video and that's it it's now empty and the last thing was the vintage style replica uh, glass eye with the spring. <clears throat> so, now that we have this emptied out, we can just go ahead and put it back together for now. It does come a little loose. Uh, you, will, you will have to uh, remove the screw, uh, take the clamp off the top and the bottom half, pinch the sides together, and twist the, uh, as you can see, it's locked right now. So if you want it a little tighter, because there is a little bit of play in the upper and lower receiver, um, I'm sorry, the upper and lower body halves, but not a big deal. And uh, many vintages were like that as well. It's just preference. If you want it a little tighter, you just got to tighten the clamp up. So if we look closer again at the quality of the finish on this, it is very, very nice. Let me see if I can angle my lighting a little bit. It's very, very smooth. So we'll start at the top and we'll work our way down. The first thing I want to mention is the shape of the emitter. Is To my eye, it is perfectly accurate to a vintage. It has the nice deep S curve, uh, whereas the 2.0 and even the Roman props had a more shallow uh, curve to it and it wasn't as accurate, whereas I like really really like having the deeper uh, curve there. It is far more accurate to a vintage and if you look at the underside here, it does have a little bit of wear, not really wear, but um, just the way the plating was put on on the inside you'll never really see it you can polish I'm sure you can clean it up with a little bit of metal polish I'm not worried about that at all you'll really never see it once the bunny ears are installed but if you look on the the edges of the S curve it is very clean it is very smooth all the way around some of the 2.0's uh, had some jagged edges from the machining process these are very smooth very very even, much closer to how a vintage Graflex is cut. Very nice. The next thing is the raised section for the buttons and the glass eye is now a perfect circle, just like a vintage, whereas the 2.0 and the Roman props had an oval uh, raised section. This is now a perfect circle. It is nice and evenly raised up where it tapers off and isn't quite as noticeable in the centers. Again, just like a vintage. Very nice. The threads are nice and clean. Uh, they're nice and crisp. No problems there. All of my replica eyes, all of my buttons and everything have threaded right in and threaded right back out without a problem. And I'll demonstrate that again later on. The hole for the uh, beer tab screw uh, it is a screw, by the way. It is not a rivet. It is a screw, which I really, really like because that makes it so much easier for disassembly. And for anybody uh, that wants to do Empire Strikes Back, all you have to do is just not put that in. You don't have to worry about grinding off uh, the rivet head and potentially damaging anything. It is a threaded screw, but it is a much smaller hole than the 2.0 had, so that makes it very, very nice for disassembly also. Uh, because on the 2.0, if you wanted an Empire Strikes Back style, which, for those of you that don't know, does not have the beer tab installed, uh, the 2.0 has a bigger hole, and it looks kind of off. So having this be smaller is a very nice touch. There's the hole for the slide screw, or the slide switch assembly, uh, which does have to be installed on this. It does not come pre-installed. But again, this uses a uh, an E-clip style assembly rather than a double-ended rivet so it makes it very easy to install uh, and disassemble if need be and we'll go over that in just a little bit moving down we have the clamp uh, 
Now the clamp is the only is one of the, really the only uh, <clears throat> excuse me forms of um, what do I want to say? It's it's the part that kind of requires the most uh, attention when it comes time to kind of make them better for the next run. Um, the only thing it may be hard to pick up on camera uh, the the lever, the clamp braces, and some parts of the clamp near the braces are just a little too shiny for my uh, personal preference. They may not be, again, all vintages vary. I've only, I only have two in my possession, uh, but it's just a little chrome. You don't have to worry about, like on some of the 2.0s and things like that, you don't have to worry about finishing issues where there's spots and there's lines and there's things like that. This is very, very clean. It's actually um, it's actually too clean. That is, is my complaint, is that it's not really uh, brushed enough. It's not a brushed satin finish uh, enough for, for my personal taste. You may like it. You may like the more uh, chromed look. And if you do, that's great. If you don't, just a little bit of Scotch-Brite um, very lightly will take care of that without a problem. The Graflex lettering around the band is nice and deep it is very crisp it's a little thinner uh, font than on a vintage uh, it's a, the vintages have a little bit wider lettering but it it you can't you really can't tell that's really being a nitpicking uh, detail so don't even worry about that it looks fantastic uh, the one thing that the the people over at graphlexshop.com uh, have already mentioned is that even they are not satisfied with the way that the lines came out in the clamp uh, some of them aren't quite deep enough as you can see on mine uh, the top four lines are fairly deep I'm, I don't have a problem with those they look good uh, the bottom ones is where it gets a little iffy the top bottom one is good and then as you get further down as you can see it kind of disappears um, now they have taken this into account, and if you are okay with that, uh, if you plan on running like uh, the Force Awakens version where it has the stainless steel uh, clamp cover over it, then you have nothing to worry about. Uh, but if, or if you just are going for more of a weathered look and you don't care about it, then they'll ship yours out uh, when the time comes. Or you can ask them to hold off on shipping it until they get a new batch of clamps that do have uh, deeper lines in them so the clamp is really the only thing that <clears throat> excuse me that requires a little bit of attention but it's really again nothing not a big deal the lot the the thin lines are the only real thing so if you have a problem with that just let them know and uh, they'll hold off on shipping yours until they have a new batch moving on down to the bottom end Let's take a look at the stamping on the bottom. I don't know if this has to refocus or not. I don't know how well you can see that. But the stamping, there we go. The stamping is very clean, is very deep. I'm very, very happy with it all the way around. It is a much uh, it is a nice brushed finish on the bottom end. Uh, some of the Roman props had, uh, it was like a, the finish wasn't as satin as the rest of it, and it was very chrome, very shiny, reflective. This does not have that. This is a very satin finish. You can even see the way the light catches it. You can see the satin in it. Uh, so it came out very, very nice. A nice, bold stamping, nice clear, nice and deep. Uh, some other replicas have a very shallow stamping this is nice and deep and it looks very very nice so overall the hilt itself is beautifully crafted it's very the finish on it is very well done it's very even it's very uh, the plating is done well the design choices are perfect in my opinion uh, the shape of the curve uh, the raised sections for the buttons everything about it is very well done again the clamp being the only uh, place for error there but again it's really nothing to even be concerned about so I'm not going to 
uh, consider it as a defect or even a negative for this. It's just, you know, every, there is, there's never going to be a perfect replica. Um, some people are expecting, you know, absolute perfection and that's, that's impossible. So I am 100% satisfied with this hilt and if anyone's on the fence about it, I would recommend it. So now we will get into more of the assembly of it because it does, there are pieces of it that have to be assembled. So we will open this up and I will put this bottom end off to the side for now because we don't really need it for this part. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the screw for the clamp so I can take the clamp off. And it's just a flathead screwdriver. And as you can see, the clamp plate on the inside falls right out. You can remove the screw, put those off to the side. And now we can open this up. We can turn and we can remove the clamp. And as you can see, the angled cuts are very nice, very clean. Everything about it is just very, very nice. So again, if you want your clamp to be a little tighter, all you have to do is if you don't do the clamp brace mod, like just like the 2.0, just like I demonstrated in the 2.0 videos, all you have to do is just pinch them together and then just give them a couple turns. You know, that, there's one complete turn. There's two, and we'll give that a shot. We'll see how that works. And it does go on a little bit tighter now, which is fine, which is what I wanted. We'll put this back on. Whoops. The bottom end definitely fits in tighter now. We'll clamp that down. And now it's much more sturdy. As you can see, there's no sound, there's no play in it. The lever has a nice feel to it, has a nice snap. That was two full turns. I think what I may do is I think I may undo it. You just got to play with it a little bit to see how you like it. So I'm going to undo it one turn. That slides on a little bit looser now. Yeah, yeah, the bottom end goes in better. Still a little bit of play. If you want it tight, maybe two. Um, but again, you can also do the clamp brace mod. So that way you can just spin it. When you undo it, you can open it up, give it a couple spins to loosen it up, take the bottom out, uh, put it back in, tighten it down, tighten it a couple times, clamp it down, and it'll be nice and tight. Just like the 2.0, uh, nothing has changed there. So I'm just gonna put my little clamp screw assembly aside. Whoops, dropping stuff. And I'm gonna open this back up. All right, now we have our top half, <clears throat> excuse me. So to assemble your top half, what you're gonna to wanna to do is we'll start with the easy parts, which it's all fairly easy. Uh, we have our replica red button that will come with it. If you select that option, of course, I think they have the option between uh, a replica red button or a thumb screw, depending on which one you wanna use. And I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. And kind of re-angle stuff. All right, so now we have our red button. And then you're gonna to wanna to get your little bag of all of your parts. Open that up. Throw the staple away. And we're gonna empty everything out here. Zoom out a little bit more. All right, so. In the bag you have an E-clip. I actually got two E-clips. Um, not sure if yours will come with one or two. You're, you really only need one. Uh, you have your side switch plate. You have your beer tab screw, which is smaller than the one on the 2.0. You have your side switch tab that goes on the inside. You have your side switch 
uh, rivet, which is just a square piece, and that is what the E-clip will slide into, but as you can see that's the outside. Looks very authentic. You have your two brass sink tabs, and we'll talk about those later on, put those aside for right now. You have your emitter screw, which again we'll put aside for right now. You have your beer tab itself, and you have your beer tab spacer. So for right now we'll just start with the easy part and we'll just do, we'll assemble the beer tab. Now the beer tab is obviously, you know, it's very, it, it's difficult to screw up the beer tab. Uh, but the only thing that I can tell is on a vintage it is much more flat, uh, meaning the finish on it. This is definitely chromed. Uh, this is a very shiny finish, <clears throat> excuse me. Whereas the vintage is a much duller, kind of like a almost like tin finish. Uh, which I kind of like. Some people may like the chrome. I kind of like the duller tin finish. Uh, a little bit of scotch Brite will dull it up. Um, I have contacted TGS about it, and they're going to see if they can find a replacement uh, material for it. If not, again, it's really no big deal. It's a matter of personal preference when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, and I kind of like the duller look, but it's really nothing. It doesn't detract from the rest of the hilt. So I'm going to take my beer tab and I'm going to thread my red button onto it. If I can, there we go. So now it's just threaded right on. I'm going to just kind of let it sit in the shroud, kind of like that. I'm going to lift it up, slide my spacer underneath, and then insert the screw. And then start the threads of the screw. This may be difficult to do because it is a small piece. There we go, now it's started. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually unthread my button so it pops out and it can spin around. And I'm going to spin the beer tab as I tighten the beer tab screw so that when you, I'm tightening this while keeping it there. So while you tighten the button around, it also tightens that screw. and kind of tighten both things. You kind of tighten the screw as you're moving the beer tab around and then you can just screw your button right in. And your screw is nice and tight and it's not going anywhere and it looks very authentic. I love the screw for the beer tab because it has the perfect bevel around the outside edge uh, that a vintage does. The spacer is the right height uh, it has a flat beer tab, just like the vintage ones do, and I just love the fact that it's, it's a screw, so you don't have to grind it off if you want to do Empire Strikes Back. It just makes it so easy. So yeah, that's nice and tight. If you want, if you don't want to have to worry about that, you can put just a tiny, tiny little dab of Loctite on it uh, when you put it in, and that way you really, you really don't have to worry about it. Uh, but that's it. That's that's the red button and the beer tab installation. Uh, that was very simple. So now we'll move on to the bunny ears. If I can remember what I did with them. There they are. So the bunny ears come uh, with the rivet installed. Now again this is not an actual rivet like on a vintage. It is a smooth head but it's actually a screw and they did this on purpose. They actually asked uh, the community which they would prefer and the majority of people requested the screw. If they can make it look like the flathead rivet, uh, we were okay with it being a screw, and I'm definitely one of those people because the screw, again, makes it so much easier to get apart than trying to, uh, or having to tape off pieces of the, of the flash and having to use a hammer to punch out the rivet and risking damage to uh, any of these pieces. So having this be 
a screw is just, again, another huge bonus in my mind. So we have our bunny ears. We can just install them. And they just slide right into place. Just like so. Now there is a threaded section uh, on the back of the, here let me pull these back out. The spacer inside the bunny ears is threaded, but only the back side has threads on it. Um, that's the side that you want facing the rear. You want the threadless side of that spacer facing the front. So it is a nice tight fit, so you don't really get a lot of uh, free wobble uh, in the bunny ears, which is also very nice because a lot of people complain that their bunny ears are too loose or they make too much noise. And you just slide it down through. <clears throat> and again, you can put a little dab of Loctite on these uh, if you want. Just a, just a dab on the uh, tip of the threads so as it threads in, uh, it doesn't come back out if you don't want it to. And then just make sure that you line up the rear hole in the in the body make sure you line up the hole in the spacer with the hole in the back tab of the hilt itself it may have been a smarter idea to do this before you put the red button in but that's the choice of kind of learning as you go and figuring stuff out and being the first one to do something is you have to be the one to figure out the right and the wrong ways to do this. Okay, I've gone ahead and I just had to use this pair of pliers uh, very gently uh, just to finish off uh, putting the rivet in because the hole in the back uh, is a, kind of a tight fit, but that's the way you want it because you don't want the bunny ears to really be loose and you don't want that rivet to come out. Uh, so just very gently with a pair of pliers, I just kind of uh, finish tightened the, the last little bit in, and it's actually very tight. Uh, and be sure that you put your bunny ears on after you put your blade holder in, uh, because if you're using a two-piece blade holder, uh, or really any blade holder, you have to, uh, especially the two-piece one from Solo's Hold, that has the accurate lip on the front, or if you're using a KR Sabres one-inch one, uh, these have to go in through the front so you want to make sure you put it in before you put your bunny ears on otherwise you're going to be taking them back off in order to put your blade holder in so with the bunny ears in the last real step to assembling it as is is the side switch which again consists of just your little uh, kind of your rivet style your plate your rear section and your E-clip that holds it all together. Now again, you only need one E-clip, so I'm just gonna take my extra one here, and I'm just gonna put it off to the side because we don't have to worry about that. So, it may also be easier to do this uh, without the bunny ears in place because it gives you better access uh, without having to reach through the bunny ears, but we're gonna give this a shot as is. So, you're gonna wanna take your plate you can see that there's a, a rougher side. It's hard to, pick, hard to pick up on camera. There we go. But there's a rougher side, and there's a smoother side with the dimple facing in. You want the, when it's facing in, when it's a punch, you want that on the outside. And you just slide your rivet with the square end through, just like that. And you're gonna slide that into the hole with the dimple facing forward. Okay, I have gone ahead and removed my bunny ears. Uh, it just makes this whole process a lot simpler. Uh, so be sure you do that uh, when installing the, side, the uh, slide switch. Uh, make sure you don't put your bunny ears in first. That should actually be the last step. Uh, I apologize if anybody is following along with this. I hope you're watching the video first. Uh, so then you're just going to take this section, once you have these two pieces inserted, you're going to take your square section, and it may hurt, uh, help, excuse me, not hurt, to tip it on this side, and as you can see, it sticks right through. You're going to want to take this and just slide it right over the edge. I don't know if you can see that, so that it rides just like that. 
and then you're going to want to take your E clip and it may help to hold this with a pair of pliers. Right now I'm just trying to get this to sit flush. There we go. Now as you can see it's sitting much better on the pin which exposes the hole for the e-clip. Sorry about that, trying to keep it on camera. This part is definitely the most tedious part of the assembly. Uh, it's really not bad. Just takes a little bit of a little bit of patience. Like anything with saber building. Just takes a little bit of finesse. So once you have the tab on the inside uh, down over, again this is kind of difficult to see, uh, but once you have it down over and you have it squarely seated, uh, it may flop around, it may move around a little bit, you don't really have to worry about it. Um, we'll just set that off to the side and I'm going to just take my e-clip with a pair of pliers like so. And I'm going to grab it right on the end. You don't want to grab it too far into the clip. You want to grab it right on the end and you want to just position it right over. Push with your thumb to keep everything pushed as far into the hilt as possible. Line up the tab on the inside. Make sure that it's nice and seated and then use the pliers to push the e-clip onto the groove. There is a groove on the end of the pin that the e-clip rides on. And I'm just going to take my screwdriver here and give it a little nudge. And as you can see it clips right on. And again it's very difficult to get this all on camera but as you can see if I shine my light in there maybe I apologize if this is difficult to see. Wait for this to focus a little bit. As you can see, the plate, the pin sticks through, the plate goes over, and then the E clip locks it all in place so that everything moves together, everything moves as one. Just like that. So it's really very simple because all you have to do if you ever want to take it apart is use a screwdriver to pry on the E clip and just pop it off. Just get it, just hook it in the openings of the e-clip and just pop it off the exact opposite way that you put it on. So if you ever need to get it apart, uh, it's much easier than, again, the rivet style of a vintage. And it looks great. It has the same slide functionality. And yeah, that's that's about it. Now again, same thing as with the beer tab. The only thing that I really don't uh, care for, and this is just a personal opinion, uh, is the finish on the plate itself for the slide switch. Uh, on, a, on my vintage, at least, it is a much duller finish. But again, that's just nitpicking. Uh, it really, it doesn't matter. It has a nice function to it. It has a nice fit. It works perfectly. And all you have to do is, when you install your blade holder, is cut that tab. Uh, cut it so it's just a little bit. Cut it so it sticks out just a little bit, just enough to ride in the wire channel. Here I have my Solos Hold blade holder. As you can see, it may be difficult to see, it's black and it's not showing up too well in the lighting but it has a wire channel right here in the side for the slide switch. So all you have to do is cut the tab so that it's just long enough to ride in that channel and activate the switch itself. So you don't have to cut it real short, you don't want to cut it flush with the inside and you don't want to leave it too long otherwise you won't be able to install the blade holder at all. So you want to leave it just far enough that it can activate the switch and still allow the switch to 
uh, move freely. If you want to do that before uh, you install it, that you can do that too. And I will actually demonstrate that now. So to get it out, all you have to do is just kind of hook it, hook the E-clip with a screwdriver and just gently pry and there it goes, popped right out. So now you can take your inside piece out. And now we have this. And again, you have your blade holder, whichever one that you plan on using. And you know that the outside diameter of this is going to match the inside diameter of this. So you can just cut it to be the same uh, size. Let me just get a pair of wire cutters. All right, so now we have just a pair of wire cutters. Now I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna leave it long so that I always have more that I can trim away if I need to. There, so now it's just a little cut. But as you can see, it's still gonna stick out way too far. It's actually gonna go something like, yeah, it'll go like that. So I'm still going to trim that up quite a bit. Okay, so now I've got this cut down to the size that I want it. I think it's gonna work. Uh, and I filed it down to the final size and removed all the burrs and things off of it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna reinstall this just like I did before. And now I have it all installed. As you can see, it still protrudes down. It still slides nicely. And we'll give this a quick test uh, with the rear portion of my blade holder here. And yeah, it slides through very nicely. And let's see if I move my hand. As you can see, it sticks down. It still is able to slide. And it rides perfectly within that channel. And it will be able to activate my switch that is in there, or that will be in there. I think that is going to work very, very well. I'm very happy with that. It's, a, it's an easy installation. It's effective. And I think it's going to work perfectly. So. Now that we have our uh, slide switch installed, we can go ahead and we can actually install uh, the rest of the blade holder itself, or at least the front half here. Again, I'm using the Solos Hold uh, two-piece design, which as you can see, consists of the rear section and the front section that has the uh, accurate lip on the front that hangs over. It's just a two-piece design that is held together uh, by the hilt itself. So you just slide the front half down in and now we can take our screw, our emitter screw that comes with the Graflex. I'll get these out of the way. And just take your little flathead screwdriver and there is a hole for the emitter screw. There's a hole in the blade holder that is tapped and threaded. It's right, right at the bottom. And all you're gonna do is thread it in. Be careful not to slip with the screwdriver and damage anything. Just go moderately tight. So there's the front half of the blade holder installed. And then slide the rear section in. Again, making sure that your slide switch is aligned in the channel. There it goes. Just like that. Still has full movability. And we can use, now you notice that this still slides around a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, the bottom half of the blade holder slides around. Um, the way to stop that from happening 
is to use your glass eye or if you have a replica red button uh, then you have the 3D printed adapter from either uh, I offer uh, my own from Shapeways that you can 3D print or Goth 3D Designs who helped design the blade holder itself also offers his own. So this just threads right in, which as I said is a perfect fit and it holds the uh, blade holder in perfect alignment. And a lot of people were worried that the graph, that the, uh, excuse me, Solos Hold blade holder does not does not align. They were worried about fitment issues since it does not work with the Romans and you can rest assured that the blade holder does definitely uh, work with the TGS replica so nothing to worry about there. So our blade holder is installed so now we can go ahead and insert our bunny ears back in again with the threaded section of the spacer towards the rear and just thread in the threaded style rivet. Okay, so I went ahead and finished installing the uh, rivet. So the bunny ears are nice and installed. Again, they're nice and tight. There's no, there's no wobble to them. Uh, they feel nice and secure. No problems there. So the last thing you got to do is just modify uh, the sync tabs to be used with the Solos Hold blade holder if you're using it, uh, because they are replica uh, sync tabs. So they're designed just like the vintage, which is meant to be installed under the shroud. Uh, whereas the Solos Hold blade holder, uh, it's a tight fit to the shroud, as you can see. Uh, there's really no room to have the sync tabs installed between the blade holder and the shroud. So you just get a file uh, just a little bit uh, to get it to sit flush because if you don't then when you put it in as you can see uh, it, it can't sit close enough to the uh, shroud. It sticks too far away. So I'm just going to file that real quick off camera and uh, I'll be right back to put those on. Okay, so I've got my sync tabs cut down as you can see <clears throat> Excuse me. I still have just a tiny little lip uh, over the front half. That's the part that you want to uh, cut down Whoop, without dropping it It still has the curve And it's just a barely a lip there to look like it's actually still the full piece. So now you're just gonna want to drop your sync pin Into it Secure it with the tool and very carefully slide it down into place and start to thread it in. And then you can just take a little screwdriver and coerce the brass tab into position where you want it. And then finish tightening down the pin. As you can see, my tab moved. That's to be expected. They do that all the time. Uh, you just gotta kind of play with it a little bit, loosen it up just a hair, move it back into position. And you may need two hands to hold it with the screwdriver while you tighten it just to prevent it from rotating. Just like that. Now you have one sync tab and pin installed and the rear one is easy because there's no tab. So all you have to do is thread it right in. Just like that. So now we'll go ahead and do the other side, same thing. There, as you can see, I've got it installed. It took a little bit of finesse uh, to get that one to go in, but you just play around with it a little bit and they drop right in. 
So we'll just do this last one. And that's it. So now we have the red button, the beer tab, the slide switch, the glass eye, our blade holder, uh, fully assembled, and the bunny ears installed. So that is basically uh, it for the top half. And then we just will install the clamp once again. Install the bottom half. And that's it, folks. That is the complete assembly of the TGS Graflex replica. Not too bad, only a couple minutes installation, about 15 minutes or so. Um, of course, you know, you still have to apply your grips of whatever you're using. Uh, if you're using a clamp cover or mylar tape uh, for Empire Strikes Back, you apply that, put your uh, clamp card in, but as for the assembly of what you get in the box from the Graflex shop, uh, that is it. Not too complicated, not too hard. And again, having the threaded uh, sections, having everything be easily removable uh, is a huge plus in my mind. And it is a feature that I really, really like. So now that assembly is done, let's go over a more in-depth look at the comparisons uh, between this replica and the other versions that are available. So to start with, let's compare it to the one and only, uh, the original, let's compare it to a vintage Graflex. Now of course this one has been installed, uh, this is my personal one, it's got the grips applied, it's got the clamp card, I have a second vintage uh, red button but let's ignore all that um, for the, for just a moment and let's zoom out a little bit and let's compare it to the vintage. Now I still have my uh, uh, beer tab installed so that's good for comparison's sake um, but if you look the two main areas uh, that everybody looks for when they compare these is the finish of them, which as you can see is a very, very similar finish. Uh, the vintage again is just a slight, slight bit shinier. Uh, to the naked eye on camera it seems to be very similar. Uh, but again, just a, just a tad of uh, metal polish will bring this to the same exact finish as this. I kind of prefer the more satin look. It looks, to me, it looks incredibly authentic. Um, so the finish is perfect. The other area that people look for is the emitter shape. And as you can see, if you compare them, if you get them to just about the same angle, which these pretty much are, you can see the emitter shape is damn near perfect. It has a nice deep S curve that a vintage has. It's not too shallow. It's not too deep. It matches it perfectly. And I'm very, very happy with it. The bunny ears are the same size as a vintage. TGS made sure to replicate the height of the bunny ears. And they even got the finish on the bunny ears correct. Because the bunny ears on a vintage, as you can see, are much shinier than the rest of the hilt. So even that is spot on. The height is perfect. The finish on them is perfect. Everything about it is just like 99.5% accurate. Um, and again, if you look at the shape around the red button of the raised sections, how it's a perfect circle and it's thinner on the top, that is identical on the TGS. If we compare them here, it is spot on. Very, very well done. Uh, unfortunately, I have 
mylar tape covering my clamp so I can't give you an accurate uh, representation of what the stamping on the clamp looks like on a vintage uh, but I can kind of give you the stamping on the bottom which of course this is this is covered up with a d-ring that is riveted on uh, but as you can see the stamping around the sides is thin it's crisp mine is kind of corroded and old uh, it is close to 70 years old after all and the vintage the uh, TGS is a little wider but I have it on good authority that these do vary from uh, vintage to vintage that it can be thinner it can be a little wider so again it looks amazing it's nice and deep it's the perfect finish on the bottom it's just it's awesome all the way around so the main areas to look out for uh, when comparing them is as I said the finish the emitter shape the bunny ears uh, the end cap the stamping things like that and they really did a fantastic job of nailing everything and really taking their time to make sure that they got this as close to a vintage as possible and I'm very very happy with it uh, again the only areas that I'm uh, nitpicking is the beer tab and the slide switch screw and the clamp areas uh, how they're a little shinier because if you look at the beer tab see how it's reflective see how it's kind of mirrored same with the slide switch uh, plate it's very shiny and if we look at a vintage you can see that the screw the beer tab itself is a much duller uh, material of metal as is the uh, slide switch it is a much duller kind of just like stamped uh, I, don't, I don't even know what type of metal they used uh, but it kind of looks I don't know it has a certain look to it when you see a vintage and you kind of pick up on that teeny tiny little detail um, the TGS just looks kind of shiny it looks brand new um, again it's personal preference if you like the shiny then it's perfect um, if you like the duller look you can take just a little bit of scotch bright to it before you assemble it and uh, clean it up that way and dirty it up and it'll I'm sure it'll look almost perfect then too um, but it's not a flaw it's not a imperfection it's just the technology of the time I think versus the technology of today uh, we're able to get things much more precise so I'm not knocking it as a as a flaw in any way so that is compared to a vintage uh, let's compare it to the first replica that we really got which was the Graflex 2.0 I have one here uh, again the two main areas are finish the finish on the 2.0 it's hard to tell um, it is a very similar finish but it's it's I don't know it's not as even um, it has its flaws all the way around uh, these are very highly mass-produced tilts um, so they do have their flaws this one's got kind of a imperfection here uh, the finish can sometimes vary from top to bottom half uh, and you do have the flaws around the clamp which as you can see on this one are heavily uh, kind of just plating issues there's stains in the plating and you can also get some very thin lines as well around the clamp band but the shape of the emitter in my opinion is way off on the 2.0s as you can see it's got a very steep curve or a very steep uh, line and the curves themselves are not very deep whereas on the TGS it has a much shallower straight line with much deeper curves which is what you really want to see um, the bunny ears on the 2.0 are also too tall compared to a vintage so watch out for that uh, you have the shape of the raised sections as you can see is more of an oval on the 2.0 on both the top and the bottom whereas the TGS is definitely the perfect circular shape Uh, the hole for the beer tab as you can see on the 2.0 is much much bigger 
uh, than that of the TGS. So if you remove this to do a Empire Strikes Back version of the 2.0, you will be left with this massive hole, which kind of looks off. I mean, it's supposed to be a hole, but when it's really that big, it's definitely more noticeable. Uh, so the two, the TGS, I'm sorry, has a much smaller hole, which is a very nice feature. So overall, the TGS is definitely, without a doubt, I mean, it's not even a question, it is a step up from the 2.0, just in, in terms of how it comes apart, how it's the authentic uh, disassembly compared to how the 2.0, the lower half unthreads. Uh, it's got the stamping on the bottom, it's got the stamping on the clamp, everything about it. Obviously this is, if you're looking for more of a true replica of a Graflex, the TGS is the way to go. The 2.0 is still the best option for dueling uh, because it does have the solid inner core uh, that, that connects the two halves. So if you upgrade it to a either a thick walled 7 8 inch blade or a one inch blade with a one inch blade holder. Um, the 2.0 is definitely still the better option for dueling uh, because of the design, how the clamp is the only thing that holds the two halves together. Uh, a replica or a vintage is really not ideal for dueling. It's really not the sturdiest design. Uh, it's made for, it's great for basically just being a, a uh, shelf piece or a, uh, a belt hanger as we call it uh, for cosplay or just to have around. It's an amazing piece, um, but if you're into dueling, I would definitely recommend still getting the 2.0. The 2.0 can be upgraded with different things, with TGS bunny ears, with different screws and things like that to make it more uh, accurate to what a vintage is. But if you're looking for a just a more accurate from the get-go without worrying about dueling, uh, the TGS beats the 2.0 hands down. Um, so, I mean, I'm not even going to get into the, the more fine details of the differences in the 2.0 uh, because we all know that it's just, it's inaccurate because they were going for, um, they wanted to make it a lightsaber first. They wanted to make it dualable. They wanted to make it sturdy. Um, so they had to sacrifice some accuracy points there. So I'm not even going to get into those. And the final one that I'm going to compare this to, and the one that's going to probably be the point of the most controversy, uh, and I even thought about not comparing it to this um, out of respect for other prop makers, is the Roman props. The Roman prop uh, replica came out earlier this year, um, again, highly anticipated, and it does have its flaws. Again, this one has, the TGS has its flaws. Every replica has its flaws. Even vintages have their flaws. Nothing is going to be perfect. Um, the main concerns with the Roman props replica is um, the emitter shape kind of still uh, has that 2.0-esque uh, shape to it. It's definitely not as accurate as the TGS one is. Um, the finishes can sometimes be um, a little misleading or improper between the upper and lower. Uh, the clamp band can sometimes have uh, some stains in it like the 2.0 had, but the lines are fairly deep. The stamping on the clamp is just as good as the TGS, really no uh, Differences there. The spacing of the of the lettering is different, uh, but again, that is such a tiny detail. Uh, the stamping on the end cap of the Roman props is thinner, uh, but again, it varies from vintage to vintage. So you can't really say that one is more uh, accurate to the other. The bunny ears on the Romans are the same size as the 2.0, so. It's just slightly less accurate than a vintage. Some people prefer the longer ones. Some people prefer the shorter ones. Some people only care about vintage accuracy. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Is the TGS does have uh, the shorter ears. Also, the Roman props comes with a threaded uh, bunny ear screw, but it is an Allen screw. I have a smooth one here that I've upgraded to uh, that I got from a member in my Facebook group. Uh, so that's been replaced. The Roman prop is a functioning uh, flash handle when you get it. It comes with all of the internals. You can instantly hook it up to put a, put some batteries in it, hook it up to a vintage camera, 
and use it. That is the advantage of the Roman props, and that is where it really, uh, it, it really shows its true colors is as a vintage flash handle, and it does an amazing job um, as that. Being converted into a saber, a functioning saber, if you want to use it just for a display piece, it's very easy. You just get some grips to put on, a D-ring, bubble card, you know, whatever you want to do, that makes it very easy. Uh, if you want to put electronics in it, that's when it becomes a little more difficult because you do have to gut the internals out of it and convert it to a blade holder. And due to the fact that these uh, circular holes for the sink pins are not properly aligned with that of a TGS or a vintage, uh, it means you either have to get the special Roman's props uh, blade holder available from romanprops.com or the one that KR Saber sells uh, that I currently have installed in this one that has the accurate lip around the front. Uh, KR Sabers only offers a one inch at the moment uh, and I think that's the only one that, the, he, that he's going to offer is a one inch uh, so you have to use the short pins with it as well but overall they are both amazing replicas. Uh, they both have their advantages. The TGS is better for uh, converting because you can use the Solos hole blade holder, you can use the uh, the Graflex shot blade holder, the Solos hold, the KR Saber standard uh, blade holder. You can use a variety of blade holders and it just drops right in and it's guaranteed to fit uh, because they made sure that they made their pin holes uh, the exact same alignment as a vintage. The Romans is better if you just want a uh, a nice display piece or if you do want to convert it it is possible it's not impossible it's not even difficult you just have to make sure you get the ac the uh, proper blade holder for it um, but they both have their advantages and their disadvantages they're both amazing products and I can't say that one is better than the other I can't say that this one the TGS has uh, a few more advantages in terms of accuracy but that doesn't really make one better than the other just that just makes one more accurate than the other um, so it's really up to you which one you want to get if you want to have a display piece or if you were looking for uh, a replica flash gun then <clears throat> excuse me then the Romans is an awesome bet if you want a more accurate uh, representation of a vintage in which you can use a variety of blade holders in which it comes it's easier to disassemble it's easier to install electronics into uh, then definitely get the TGS because it is it's an equally amazing product all the way around so that's just my comparison between the two again both amazing products but the TGS in my mind is better for those looking for accuracy and, <clears throat> excuse me and those looking to install electronics just the fact that the riv these rivets have been replaced with smooth head screws that are easy to remove and just the fact that they got the emitter shape right the fact that they got the sink pinholes accurate um <clears throat> excuse me everything about this just is very very well done uh they have taken into account uh they made it clear before they even started shipping these that they knew that the lines on the uh, clamp weren't the best and they offer uh, if you want to have them hold it until they get a better batch of clamps in they will do that they will take care of you um, they're not worried about that so uh, keep that in mind if you're okay with it if you plan on putting a cover over it or if you just don't care uh, they'll ship it you know as soon as your order number comes up nothing to worry about um, as for the shinier uh, parts I have discussed that with them as well and they will look into uh, trying to find a way to make them uh, a material that is more accurate to a vintage but again that is such a tiny nitpick that I'm not worried about it um, I'm the one that's bothered by it and I'm not worried about it so hopefully hopefully no one else is either um, overall this is an amazing product I am very happy that I spent the money on it uh, if you have a chance to get one I highly recommend it it's it's just it's great I can't I can't say enough good things about it uh, I would say that in terms of accuracy it is the closest replica to a vintage that we have just because of the details of everything that they they really took the time to discuss things with the community to ask questions to ask what th we would want to see 
um, and to post updates along the way to show what they're working on and uh, they welcome any insight we have to make the product as, as perfect as possible and they really took their time, they really did their homework and it shows because they, they manufactured an amazing product. So if you're on the fence about whether to get a 2.0, a Roman Props, or a TGS, again, it really depends on what you're planning on doing with it. If you want to dual, uh, get a 2.0 and do the accuracy upgrades to make it as close to accurate as possible. If you want something that you can uh, display, if you want something to uh, convert to a, you know, kind of a display piece, or if you want a functioning thing that you can hook up to a vintage camera, then get the Roman props because that's an amazing replica that is a functioning flash handle and, and no one else makes something like that. So definitely uh, go for that. If you want to convert uh, a replica into a functioning saber and you want the most accurate, you know, you care about the teeny tiny little details. Um, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know what the tiny details are. They don't know from looking at one to the other. Uh, they can't see it, and there's no there's no shame in that. There's no fault in that. Uh, but if you you are one of those people that that sees the tiny details, then get the TGS because they really took their time to make sure that those tiny details are accurate, and they wanted to make people happy. So overall, I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, again, the only uh, discrepancies I have are the clamp, which are already being taken care of, and there's just the tiny details of the finish on some of the little accent pieces. That's it. That's really the only downsides to this replica. Everything else I'm very happy with. TGS has been amazing to deal with all the way uh, through this process. It took a little longer than some people would have would have liked, but with a small company like this manufacturing such a detailed piece and making sure that it's absolutely perfect it's understandable that it took a little bit of time and there are always going to be delays because something may come out of manufacturing that they're not happy with and they have to go back and they have to redo it they put a lot of time they put a lot of effort and they put a lot of money into this run and i for one am very grateful that they took the time to make sure that it was perfect they could have shipped out a product that we would have been very unhappy with and they could have taken the money and run but they didn't do that they made sure that it was as good as possible and we have the guarantee that in the future they will be working even harder to make it even more uh, accurate and make us even happier so that that's just astounding to me so if you're on the fence uh, you're not sure which one to get I definitely can recommend the TGS it's an amazing replica and hopefully this review has helped you hopefully uh, the assembly portion of it uh, also helped you out. It's really not that difficult. Like I said, it takes about 15 minutes to assemble what you get uh, in the kit. It's an amazing piece. Don't hesitate. I don't know how many are going to be left. I don't know if they're going, going to even be doing a second run. Um, I'm not sure if they know at this time whether they will or not. It depends on interest. It depends on the demand for them. If the demand is there, I'm sure they will do a second, maybe even a third run, maybe even offer them all the time. I don't know. But if you're on the fence and you're worried about missing your chance, definitely get one. Uh, don't miss out. It's a great piece. So for everyone at TGS uh, or thegraphlexshop.com, I want to personally thank you for all of your time, your dedication, your hard work, and for giving me the chance to uh, review this and for welcoming the review. Uh, some people don't like it when you review their product because I'm, I, I try to be honest. I try to be, uh, I try to make sure that I do a good job nailing down the, the pros and the cons, a very unbiased opinion of whatever it is I'm looking at, and you guys did an amazing job. So I want to personally thank you for all of your hard work and just the opportunity to review it at all. So. So I want to personally thank uh, all of you for watching. Uh, be sure to follow me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Graphlex Addict Support Group. Uh, you can also follow me personally at uh, facebook.com forward slash East Coast Sabres USA. Uh, be sure to check out the graphlexshop.com on Facebook and their website. Uh, they release updates uh, pretty, pretty consistently. 
Uh, they're fantastic about responding to messages. Uh, just a great small little company to uh, deal with all the way around. So be sure to check them out. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to message me on YouTube or on Facebook, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But seriously, guys, thank you all for watching, and uh, I hope I hope you like your replica. May the force be with you all.